Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a quick look at a new tent from Alps Mountaineering. This is the Trail TP2. So it's a TP style tent, which was really attractive to me for both some of my backpacking stuff and some of my hunting adventures because you're immediately saving some weight because you can use a trekking pole. You don't have to have tent poles. So you're bringing something that you probably already have and just having another use for it. So by using the trekking pole, especially a lightweight carbon one like this, you can now get this tent under the four pound mark. I think this one is three pounds, 10 ounces, and it's still a pretty large tent. So you can fit two people in here comfortably, or if it's just a solo hunt, you've got lots of room for gear. In my case, camera stuff, bows, arrows, knives, game bags, all your gear can all fit inside the tent. So that's why I was attracted to this style. And there are a bunch of tents like this, but a lot of these TP style tents they get pretty expensive. Whether you're looking at Seek Outside or some of these other name brands, there, there's some premium stuff that's been around for a little while, but that's why I was excited to see something like this that comes in at a much lower price point, just over a hundred bucks, that I think can be just as good for a lot of what I'm doing. Now, if you're hiking the AT or the PCT, or you're gonna be using your tent day in, day out for a really long time, you may need something a little bit more heavy duty. It may be worth paying for something a little bit more high end, but for most people, including me, who are gonna be using this for a two, three times a year, multi-day backpacking trip or some backcountry hunting trips, this may be the perfect thing at a great price. So let's check it out. So right off the bat, we can see that the size is very attractive. It comes in a nice bag with cinches on the outside. Compared to my camera bag here, you can see that it's pretty small and compact. So this will easily fit inside of any backcountry hunting pack or any serious uh, backpacking pack. Even if you don't have an external frame that you wanna rig this on, you just need to stuff it down somewhere on the inside of your pack. I think it'll still work well just based on the size. All right, so let's take it out of the bag and get it all set up. Pulling the tent out of the bag, it was wrapped and held together with two small fabric cords. I'm probably not gonna hang on to these because I know I'm gonna lose them in the future. So if you don't need them, why carry them? So we're gonna speed it up here a bit, fast enough so that I'm not wasting a whole bunch of your time, but still slow enough so you can actually see how things come together. So I spread out the tent, opened up the bag of steaks. I made a point to not read instructions this whole time, maybe just because I'm lazy, but I think it's actually pretty realistic. Guys like me don't like being told what to do with instructions and we generally feel like we can figure it out, so I think I'm gonna give it a first try just based on intuition. So I pulled out the stakes. Uh, I tried pushing them in with my feet. Fortunately, I did not bend them at all. I think these type of stakes are generally included with most tents because they're cheap and they're lightweight. Lightweight is really nice, but they're not the most durable. If you want more durable stakes, I suggest something like the MSR Groundhogs or some sort of extruded stake instead of a wire stake. I set out all six stakes on the six obvious points and I saw that I still had a few left. It was a little nylon puck with two straps on it that seemed obviously enough like it was a protective piece that covers the carbide tip of the trekking pole so it doesn't poke a hole in the top of the tent. So of course I unzipped the tent, put that on the end of the trekking pole, and then stuck it in the top. Simple enough. I then expanded the pole to what seemed like a reasonable height. Now I figured different trekking poles come in different sizes so the exact height probably didn't matter a whole lot. The crinkling you're hearing is me pulling out the protective paper that lined the bottom. It was more of a newsprint material that I hadn't really expected inside of the tent. Now that the center pole was erected, I went back and put a little bit more tension on some of the corner stakes. So then of course I closed the door just to make sure everything functioned properly. The tent came with a complete set of guy lines. Now on some tents, these are pretty much optional and on some they're required to maintain stability. So I went ahead and tied the guy wires on so you can see what it would really look like. We're not gonna take any shortcuts here. Now these wires were a little bit tedious the first time you use the tent, but not too bad. I just used a bowline to tie through this loop and then I'm just gonna leave that attached. Notice that it's reinforced right around that loop. I like that. So at first I thought that these extra stakes were used on the guy wires, but no, those truly are extra because you can just go to the same that your corner goes to. So that makes it nice and simple and consolidates the stakes. So looking at these corners, it's got a little adjustment here 
I thought that was a snap or a clip at first, but it's actually just a very small cleat. It's kind of a miniaturized version of this cleat, which I really appreciate. That's really nice. And that's especially good if there's a lot of moisture in here or you get some leaves or this just kind of stretches out over time. You can get out in the middle of the night, tighten that up really quickly without having to tie anything. So looking at our corners, so it is reinforced. We've got double stitch seams. We've got kind of a hem around the outside. It's more decorative than functional. I mean, it obviously is a hem, so it's gonna protect this from kind of ripping, tearing. It's not super thick there, but I think it'll get the job done. So it's got some nice vent flaps here. These actually do Velcro down, so you could close them up if you wanted to. Generally, I think you're gonna to wanna to leave these open most of the time, because in any tent, you're gonna be producing a lot of condensation just from your breath, and that's gonna be going up, and you don't want it to drain out down on top of you, you want it to vent out. So it's got one of these on both sides. We can go look at the other one over here. One on both sides, exactly the same. You can leave them both open, you can close one, you can close both, do whatever you want there. It's also got another vent that works the same way on this door. Now this one's got a little rigid piece on it that feels like plastic or foam, but you can actually use almost as a little strut to prop it open. On the door, we have a nice sealed weather flap here, and it's really big and chunky, which I appreciate because you can just open it up easily and it doesn't get chewed up in its own zipper. At least it hasn't for me yet. I think on some of these smaller ones, they tend to get eaten up by the zipper. And it's got toggles on either side. I've got the camera in my hand, so I can't easily do it, but it's got this loop so you can actually tie the door back. You could technically do that with both doors, but this one is tied to the stake. So you would have to unhook that, in which case I would probably recommend doing this in the opposite order than how I just did it. Have this main guy wire down below your door loop so that you can easily take that on and off. From the outside, this shape looks like a wide hexagon. But when you open up the door, you can actually see that it's a rectangle with one side pulled further out, technically making a pentagon. So this feels kind of close to the front of the door, but it technically is in the middle because this side is cut off, giving you a nice vestibule which I think is especially helpful. So you can sit right here, take your muddy boots off and not bring them into the tent with you. You can leave your pack here. Um, if you need to eat under here, worst case scenario, I think there's enough room to do that. Nice that they have all this. All right, so I'm gonna kick my boots off like one would, get inside. And I think you will wanna do that because this floor is not reinforced except for right here where your pole goes. Now I ran it handle down, point up, and it's got this little reinforcement piece in there. And notice I am right at the maximum height, right at the stop mark on my trekking pole. So around all edges of the tent, we've got this mesh so that we get airflow coming in from down below us and then venting out the top. I think that's great for a warm weather tent. I think if you're trying to use this in very cold weather, that vent is not gonna be your friend. So for one person, this floor plan I think is extremely comfortable. So I can actually sprawl out, lay back. I could like make snow angels in here. I've got plenty of room. For two people, it gets a little bit more difficult because you've got this pole right in the middle. So you can't just lay side by side. You kind of have to lay diagonal, putting your feet down in this middle corner and your head by the door. So it's big enough for me to do that. I'm 5'11" but I would be probably playing footsie with somebody over there. So if you're really tall, probably this is just a one man tent. If you're not especially tall, I don't think this would be a problem. And of course you've got your standard warnings, especially keep it away from flame. Do not cook in here. Do not have a heat source in here. You know the drill. And of course your standard pack of don't eat it. The outer door and the inner door both have dual zippers which is really nice. If you can't reach one, there's another one for you. Double stitching on everything on the interior as well. 
and a little hanging hook. Usually this is for my headlamp. One of the big ideas of this whole design is using this pole so that you can save a pound or so by not bringing separate poles with you. But that means it's reliant on you having a good trekking pole. I wanted to see if we had any other options. Obviously you could go, you know, get a shovel handle or a dowel rod or what I would probably do if I wanted something more permanent is just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get some half inch EMT conduit and cut it to the right height. Then you've got a permanent non-adjustable pole that will always work and is a little bit more rigid than something like this. My camera tripod is more than tall enough to do the job, but if you're on some backcountry hunt, you may have shooting sticks with you. I was hoping that this would be able to serve the same purpose, but no, they're not quite tall enough. If you have the tripod, I think it would work, but not these little bog bog style uh, bipods. So all in all, pretty cool tent. Is it the most high-end, high quality? No, but I think for a lot of people, it's a great design that's super practical. So who would I recommend this for? Uh, I would say somebody like me who is gonna use this for kind of short distance, short term, you know, three, four day backpacking trips. I think that would be fine. I think anything longer than that, you're gonna start running the risk of maybe you're pushing it a little too hard for something this lightweight. Um, if you want to go camping with your family and cram a bunch of kids in a tent, this is not the one for you. It's somebody's gonna kick down that pole in the middle of the night, I guarantee it. And it's gonna be a little bit crowded and it's just not comfortable for that. But for backcountry hunting, backcountry hiking, I think this is a great option. It's also not a winter tent, but it's not intended to be a winter tent. It's got those vents, nice airflow, nice circulation. So if you want something just to take with you in the summer where you're gonna be nice and protected from the rain, from the elements, but you're not gonna be just sweltering hot, just sweating it up all night, I think it's a pretty good option. So the setup on this tent, without any instructions, was pretty dang easy. So sometimes it's the teardown and the pack up and getting it to roll up in this original bag that can be a little bit of a pain so obviously we're not going to read any instructions we're just going to try to do it and we're going to see how it goes The only part of the teardown that was not extremely intuitive was how to fold this thing back up. Because it's not a rectangle, it's not a square, it's just kind of this weird diamond shape. So I started with the peak and then just kind of tucked everything in to the point where I felt like I could generally roll it up to about the right width. I went slow just to squeeze all the air out, helping control the shape a little bit. But I wanted to just see how my first attempt lined up because I figured I could probably cram it in the bag from even a loose roll. I definitely could have been a little bit more careful. I was just kind of moving fast and recklessly, but I figured manipulating the bag enough, I could get it to cram inside. So it all seemed to be fine, but if you were a little bit more patient, took time more than I did, then this would work out great with no problem. The compression straps on the outside of the bag were actually really nice to help suck down the girth of the tent a little bit fitting in a nice tight package. So I think real time, my teardown was maybe three minutes tops. And remember, that's my very first time to tear this down. I bet you could tear this down in under a minute easily. And because this whole tent is basically just one piece, well, you've got this bag of stakes, you've got the actual tent, and then you have that little um, kind of adapter so you don't poke a hole in the top but there's not a lot to it. So you could even use this without the bag and just stuff it down in the bottom of your pack if you wanted. Now, one thing I did not mention on this tent earlier, because it stakes in, because it's a teepee tent, and this is true of just about any teepee tent, you need a central pole, like I talked about, but it's also not freestanding. Staking it in is very important. So if you're going somewhere where you plan on camping on a rock face where you can't stake stuff in, you probably want something freestanding, not this. But nine out of 10 times, if you're in any sort of a forested area like this, not a problem whatsoever. 
So I hope you guys found this helpful looking at the Alps Mountaineering Trail TP2. So this was again, just an overview, but I'm gonna actually use this probably up in Arkansas, probably going back up to the Eagle Rock Loop. I think this would be great there. And then I plan on using this on some of my fall camping, maybe some backcountry elk hunting, some whitetail hunting, who knows? I need to see what my tags look like but I think this is a great tent for that kind of stuff. So hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. If it's super technical, I may not be able to answer it, but if it's based on my experience with this tent, I'll let you know what I think. Until next time, stay safe, be free, and never stop seeking adventure.